running Never did much good Hiding Doesn't last forever You can't run faster When it's you you're running from So you throw your hands up Like doves to the setting sun Somewhere down the stars are falling Upon a thin black veil You'll find the mysteries enthralling Five seconds seems like Five billion years Ten thousand galaxies away Yet still so near Welcome to Karen Holton's podcast Karen permanently lost 178 pounds and found happiness and success by following her own advice. She has now developed that advice into the quantum health transformation. Heal, evolve, and thrive. Karen's website offers a free webinar workshop series, and you'll also find tools, methods, and practices to assist you to become the change you want to see in the world. She believes that we are all connected. Heal the planet by healing yourself. Connect with Karen at her website, KarenHoltonHealthCoach.com, and through Facebook at Facebook.com slash Quantum Health Transformation. Now for the podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0. Today is step one, white, state of bliss and spiritual exercises video workshop. Step one is designed for those who wish to access feelings of comfort, happiness, and spiritual joy. It provides further ascension skills to assist with personal evolution, knowledge about the relationship between physical comfort, mental happiness, and spiritual joy, and will teach you about a clear path to spiritual bliss with many blessings. Be sure to also check out the corresponding video tutorial. My students today are Don Rogers, Canadian Spinja, and Ray. Make sure you check out their channels and um, their links, which will be below. And to find out more about my work, all of the links are featured below in the description as well. Subscribe to my channels, leave me some comments, smash that like button, and share this video with your friends. Hi guys, welcome back. You've been amazing showing up for, um, well, this is the 12th uh, workshop video we've made together and uh, it's been quite a journey. Next week, I just want to let everybody know that we're going to do the conclusion to the Quantum Health Transformation Program and it's going to be live and I'll have the thumbnail posted on YouTube and Facebook and Don will probably feature it as well on his channel and Spinja. And um, you're all welcome to join us if you have any questions or comments or just to participate in the conclusion to the program. Even if you haven't done the whole program and you're just curious or have something to say, you're you're more than welcome. So yeah, so um, how are you finding the program so far, guys? It's uh, it's, it's a lot of information, eh? It is, it is, and um, it's uh, I, I, it's it's answered a lot of questions that I've had as well, and brought up ones that uh, I didn't know I uh, had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you formulate them as you go along for sure. So I'm pretty excited about today's episode. So those of uh, those of you who are just joining us, um, you start at step nine. So you can either go to the playlist on my YouTube channel under Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0. You can also go to Don's channel and find all the workshops. I have the, all the video tutorials and the workshops on my YouTube playlist, but also I recommend you visit my website, www karenholtonhealthcoach.com where you'll see the program all laid out with additional information there's some videos that are uh, from 2017 workshops that I did then but also the video the new videos 
uh, tutorials and workshops, a complete program. So do start with the introduction and the orientation and then start and then after that go to step nine and work your way down to do step one last but if you're joining us for the first time today you're more than welcome i'm sure you'll enjoy the programs okay so now we'll just open up the screen share and we'll get on with today's lesson so for those of you who have purchased the pdf copies there are three dollars and 99 cents available excuse me, on my website, but the program is for free. Uh, the audio and visual tutorials are for free. And um, so here's the landing page that shows you the entire program. And you start, as I mentioned, with step nine, black, and you work your way up through the chakras because each lesson actually corresponds to opening up and activating a different chakra within your body and um, and it goes along with the lessons and then work your way up and then do step one last. But if you're, like I said, joining us for the first time today, you're more than welcome. So this is Quantum Health Transformation. It's a new health paradigm and it was written by myself, Karen Holton. And this is version 3.0, Advanced Training for Healers and Alternative Health Practitioners. And as I mentioned, today is step one, white, achieve a state of bliss and spiritual exercises. I also want to add right from the get-go that this has nothing to do with religion whatsoever. And um, if your religion's working for you, you know, keep it. Why get rid of something that works? But if you're sort of in those in-between spaces between beliefs and opening up and awakening and, and finding your spirituality, you will find this is very much a spiritual program, but it has nothing to do with dogma or any religious persuasion. So welcome everybody. This PDF primer is meant to accompany the corresponding live recorded tutorial. And um, it has the same name, Quantum Health Transformation, version 3.0 Advanced Training for Healers and Alternative Health Practitioners. And again, step white. And both the primer and um, the quantum health transformation version 3.0 workshops will be presented in descending number order when published to YouTube and my website. And so, as I mentioned, you start with step nine and you work your way down to do step one last. And just as a reminder, all information presented in any quantum health transformation media was received in a download and was channeled from the Living Library, also known as the Akashic Records. Further, this material was downstepped and developed through the filter of my own personal life experience. I'm not an expert, a mathematician, or a scientist. I'm a seeker of knowledge and wisdom. The Quantum Health Transformation Program is ideal for those who are awakening and for those who are experiencing ascension symptoms but the content is beneficial for everyone who wishes to experience a better quality of life. This system of quantum health transformation works well for me. However, you must synthesize this information and take only that which serves you. At the very least, it is my hope that from this material, you will be stimulated to seek your own inner wisdom. And also, please note that any part of the Quantum Health Transformation original version 2.0 or version 3.0 series can be copied and shared for free under the Fair Use Clause, as long as credit is given to myself, Karen Holton. So you can go ahead and incorporate it with your own teaching programs, learning system, share it with friends, neighbors. And I also highly recommend that you help to support my work by uh, purchasing the PDF copy that you'll see displayed on the screen during this presentation. And uh, there's a PDF for every step. There's actually uh, 12 altogether. And they're only $3.99 Canadian each. And that helps me to uh, cover some of my expenses. And it's very, very affordable. So if you are working with other people, ask your clients and your customers to also purchase their own copies of the PDF. And the other uh, advantage to that is all the links are embedded. And so you just click wherever the 
print is in blue and it takes you directly to the research or other material or supportive information that you might need to help you with your journey. So here we are, step one, state of bliss and spiritual exercises. So you might be wondering, what is a state of bliss and how can we personally achieve it? I would say a state of bliss is very in short supply in these days. So this is a really, really good lesson to help everybody with their journeys. The state of bliss includes feelings of perfect happiness and spiritual joy. Achieving a state of bliss requires comfort for the body, mental happiness, and contentment, along with a joyful spirit. This combination creates a magical condition which makes all things possible. How? It has been scientifically proven that our emotions affect the strength of our heart's toroidal energy field, as well as the health of many other bodily systems, both physical and energetic. This is what they found at the Heart Math Institute. And again, if you have the PDF, you just can click on here and go right to the Heart Math Institute um, studies. And they said, and I quote, the answers to many of our original questions now provide a scientific basis to explain how and why the heart affects mental clarity, creativity, emotional balance, and personal effectiveness. Our research and that of others indicate that the heart is far more than a simple pump. The heart is, in fact, a highly complex, self-organized information processing center with its own functional brain that communicates with and influences the cranial brain via the nervous system, hormonal system, and other pathways. These influences profoundly affect brain function and most of the body's major organs and ultimately determine the quality of life. So there's um, an image here for those of you who are on audio. I highly recommend you come over and watch the video as well. And it shows uh, a diagram showing our toroidal field and how it's organized around our body. And even when we're not touching another person, we're influencing their sphere of energy and they're influencing ours. And that's another way that we can become the change that we want to see in the world. Now, I'm going to just stop at this point and ask Dawn and, and uh, Spinja if they have anything to say about the experiment we did. I used an ordinary metal coat hanger as a divining tool. And um, <clears throat> yeah, and... Um, so I did it first to Spinja and then she did it to Dawn and we both had the same results. So she just slow, she pointed the hook of the, of the, um, coat hanger, uh, towards Dawn's chest, which is the source of his, uh, of his toroidal field, and then started to back away until the coat hanger swang off to the side, which showed where his toroidal field ended. And then we got him to think about something really sad and did it again. And that toroidal field shrunk dramatically. And then she backed, she asked him to think about something really positive and she backed away and his toroidal field was huge. And I did the same thing to her and they filmed it. And it's actually on um, Don's um, um, YouTube channel. So please do go over, subscribe to his channel and check out that video. So folks, I wanted to ask you, what was the, your what was your experience like? Had you ever seen the tangible proof or has anyone ever showed you that before? And were you surprised? I've I've never seen it. And uh, like it, it blew my mind. And yeah. it, it sure does make sense why like when you go out into the world and you're you're shining and and all that that there's just some energies that are just irritated and feel the urge to squash you like we yeah. actually saw like physical evidence that that is a thing it just makes sense <laughs> well yeah and it, it definitely validated something her and i had talked about because like we you and i and her have all spoke about vibrational resonancy and everything else and the further your toroidal field goes up with your vibration right and if we're going around feeling super great and around a bunch of pissed off people 
we literally rub them the wrong way. Oh yeah. Because, like, hey, and they're like, and they're like, Hey, who the hell are you? Like it, it actually happens just on physical vibration. And I think that experiment it proves it. <laughs> showed that so well. Oh, yeah, I love it. And I hope I hope you share it with other people because it's very powerful. And the other thing is, did you notice how small the toroidal field is around negativity or upsetness or negative feelings? Really, all the negative shit in the world uh, doesn't have to keep us down. It has very little effect. Then look at the positive size of our toroidal fields when we're thinking positively or, or thinking about loving things. Oh my God, are we ever powerful? So then you contrast that to what you see on the news and even the alternative media and how much of it causes us to go into fear. That shrinks our toroidal field. And that affects every aspect of our health. As I read the information on this page, it affects our hormones, our nervous system, other pathways. It affects our major organs. It determines our quality of life. So how important is it for us to reach out to that loving and high, high vibrational state. I can't stress this enough. And it's a simple concept, but very few seem to be able to free themselves, you know, from the trappings of, of the negativity. So before I move on, do you folks have anything else you want to add? I, I do. Um, this course has really brought something forward that we've been doing. And the other day, Spin and I were sitting together, and I looked at her, and I went, because there's been things going on in her life, and everything's trying to frazzle us. But there was a moment where I looked at her and went, do you see that, that there's nothing wrong in the universe right now? Like, sometimes that's all it takes, is just to observe that moment of good. Like, we've had so many frantic things, like, how are we going to pay for this truck repair? How, oh my God, the water heater went again. Great, the sink broke. But there was a moment the other day where there was nothing wrong. <laughs> and I, I made sure that we both stopped and noticed that moment because the universe gives you those two to expand your field and everything. Like it, this course has really made me aware of these things. Wonderful. I'm so happy to hear that. So by practicing the nine steps to quantum health transformation, we bring comfort to the body. And for more about that, review steps eight, six, and five. Happiness to the mind. And more about that, review steps nine, seven, four, and three. And joy to the spirit by uh, checking out steps two and one, thus creating the conditions necessary to feel a state of bliss. Here are some exercises that will bring joy to your spirit and help you to create a reality environment which is peaceful and rewarding. These exercises will improve every experience you have and in some surprising ways. So the first thing we're going to look at is love. That's a word tossed around a lot, but very few people really seem to get the gist of what, <clears throat> what love is and what a powerful tool it is for change. Practice loving everyone, especially those who disappoint or hurt you. So remember, when we get disappointed or hurt, our toroidal field shrinks. But when we practice loving those people anyway, we re-expand it and expand it even more. It undoes the harm. Accept them as they are and honor their life journey. Just as we have disappointed and hurt others, Everyone needs the chance to learn, change, and evolve. Refrain from judgment and focus on becoming the change we want to see in others. Of course, you have the right to remove yourself from harm. Let's face it, sometimes it's not safe or in our best interest to love certain people. When we have been injured by another, it seems impossible to love them. It is important to remember that any negative feelings that we have towards others adds further injury to ourselves energetically, physically, and emotionally. It might only be possible to unlove them in the beginning of your forgiveness process. Unloving someone leaves room for them to live their life according to their free will without our judgment. 
Love involves our paying attention to other people's lives. Sometimes unlove is necessary to mind our own business and to do our own personal work. Unlove is a neutral place as opposed to hate, anger, or jealousy, which are negative states that do harm to all parties involved. So when somebody's hurt us, even though we have our feelings, which are natural and healthy, you know, it's easy to become resentful and to harbor judge, or sorry, grudges and things like that. But instead of going to those negative places, hate, anger, and jealousy, just make up your mind you're going to unlove them. It's a very neutral place. And then what happens is it doesn't shrink your heart's toroidal field. It doesn't have a negative effect on you. And it gives them the freedom to learn from their own mistakes. And we've already gone through that, especially in step four, where we talked about heuristics and our learning outcomes and how to change our learning outcomes. But at the same time, nobody should stay within abuse. We have a right to remove ourselves from abuse. But what we do with those situations, and we can self-soothe, and that's taught in step eight, there's many ways that we can restore ourselves to balance and health and to move on with our successful lives, which in a way, I think living a very successful life is actually the very best uh, uh, way of, of creating justice or even revenge, just not bothering with them, letting them sit where they're at and really achieving something of, and the happiness in your own life. When you eventually achieve the ability to love unconditionally, it doesn't take long before you see your world soften and people will become more loving and accepting of you. As your world softens, you begin to relax and trust that everything will be all right. Resentments dissolve and past wrongs seem to fade from memory. You just don't think about them anymore because you've let them go. Start with self-love. Show yourself that you truly love yourself by taking good care of your mind, your body, and your spirit, and the nine steps will assist you with this. True love stems from self-love. Until we master self-love, we do not truly know what it means to love others. Up until this point, we are merely exercising illusionary love. Put yourself in the very center of your circle of care. So a lot of people have trouble in the beginning doing this. And so I recommend they think of themselves as a younger, more inexperienced version of themselves and create sort of an internal parent. Now, when you have a child, your child always wants to do things that you know are not good for them. And they want to do them because those things taste good or they have high entertainment value or help them to... Um, um, you know, sort of leave the pressures of the world and be totally distracted. But you have to bring them back to eat properly, to have balance in their lives, to get exercise and fresh air, to learn how to work and contribute to society. And we need to do the very same thing to ourselves. And a lot of people are very externally focused and they lose sight of this. Do you folks have anything you want to add to that? I, um, my experience is pretty much al aligned with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, there was a point in my, a point in my life where like I, I started doing a physical change because I knew I needed to change my, my eating, um, style, but I also knew that I needed to do more and I needed to work on myself. And so that's when I, my doctor suggested it was a mindfulness, like pain management um, meditation course that I did. And that's where I started to realize, you know, like I didn't love myself. And so I, you know, and, and uh, it's, it's basically um, like you need to do that in order to take care of others um, somebody gave me the analogy of the whole um, putting if you're in a like if you're in a plane uh, emergency and the oxygen masks fall, you need to put your own mask on first 
So that way you can take care of others. That's right. And, exactly. And so in doing so and doing this course and starting to take care of myself, I started seeing things differently. I started understanding boundaries and things like that. And that's when Don came into the picture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It, yeah, it totally works. When you have gone through the nine steps a couple of times, you're able to sort of see the entirety as a whole. And the whole course is actually a course in self-love. All of it, all of it, every aspect of it. And it's so, so important. So from there, let's take a look at joy. Make time to bring feelings of joy into your daily routine. Think, feel, and do things that make you feel joyful. Even if you're busy, listen to inspiring music, watch short comedies or videos of cute animal antics, and be sure to pass on the joyful feelings by sharing these with others. So you often see on Facebook complaints about all we do is post, you know, pictures and videos of our pets and our and kittens and stuff. But that is so helpful and so beneficial because no matter what you're doing through your day, you know, we always stop and do a bit of scrolling and you come across these things and they really warm your heart and they really reset you into a state of joy. So I think it's a really good thing that we're sharing those things. I think there's a lot of good things and not so good things that have come out of social media. See the humor in everyday occurrences, especially situations which may have previously invoked a negative response. Resist making fun of others and find humor in your own situations. Don't be afraid to act silly. Silliness can be a powerful tool which alters mood, making room for joy. So I want to tell you something that I did with my kids as a single parent. I started doing it right after my husband left us. And we were destitute and we had a lot of problems. And we started having old English tea parties where we all spoke in silly English accents, not saying that an English accent is silly, but obviously we weren't English. So what we were doing was very silly. And we had so much fun and we gave ourselves um, funny names and we gave our pets funny names like Mrs. Twaddle Spoon and, and, um, you know, things like that. And we, oh, pass the biscuits. We were just being totally silly. And we'd laugh and laugh and laugh. And it really helped us to stay, to keep from drowning within the sadness of our situation. So don't be afraid to be silly. Often people will look at you like you're being immature or ask you to act your age. Or, that's ridiculous. Silliness is so important. And one thing, you know, a lot of people, I being an older person, when we act silly, people go, oh, old people, they're weird. No, we just understand and harness this very valuable tool for creating joy in our lives. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Sven? Oh, go ahead, Ray. <laughs> well, just like, like to that, um, every time like Don watches like one of his favorite movies all the time and like every time we just like just scream lines at each other or <laughs> like just go back and forth with something and just just for fun like no reason no no purpose no not nothing and it always <laughs> makes spin cringe and <laughs> which makes us all laugh it, Wonderful. it's really because both he and I can do really good vocal impressions of several famous movies <laughs> and have certain parts of even Canadian comedies down to a science. And she's just like, oh, like, how did it like? But it, it's just, it, it's a giggle. And I'm glad we're teaching him that too. Like, it's okay to laugh at yourself, just be silly. Like, yeah. And another thing you can do too, and this is a little bit more of an intermediate or advanced technique. But as when the shit hits the fan, you just start laughing because it's just ridiculous. And of course, this is broken or of course that doesn't work. And, you know, and you just laugh at the situation. And the other thing, too, is even like when we get really upset by our political leaders, not mentioning any names, us being Canadians, but you can just laugh at them and that drains all their power away. It's a very, very effective tool. Play often with your pets, your kids, your lover, and your friends. 
Play is an essential part of wellness and it quickly brings you into a, a joyful state. When challenges come and joyful feelings seem like a thing of the past, try ra random acts of kindness. Do this anonymously if possible. Every time you do so, and then later when you think about it, you will feel joyful. And once you realize that you can generate a state of joy, practice this daily. It's absolutely a skill. And play, you know, it doesn't matter how old your cat or your dog gets. How quick are they to jump at the opportunity to play? Uh, humans are the only ones. We get to be adults and suddenly we think, oh, we can't play anymore. We can only play by watching sports, you know? Uh, no, we can play. Uh, Ray, go ahead. Well, our one-year-old dog and our 13-and-a-half-year-old cat wrestle and play all the time. So, yeah. like, the, you know, like, age doesn't matter at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, um, and you can even play pretend. There's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're consciously aware that's what you're doing. It's sure, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are not even aware that they're pretending is just habit, you know, and social expectation. But you can have a lot of fun. So silliness and playfulness, you know, and you need a break from the strain of the constructed reality. And, and, I, and I'm stressing the word constructed reality because that's not the real reality. That's, that's a whole nother topic that I guess, uh, Don, you and I are going to get into eventually and hopefully produce a podcast about that. Yeah, and it, it got touched on too, not in depth, but in the one I just recorded too, that <laughs> how, how, uh, Stephen from BG Cast was talking about how a lot of it's scripted. So we, we glazed over it, but yeah, I can't wait for the one that we're going to be doing. Wonderful. And yeah, so everybody tomorrow uh, on Don's um, on Don's channel, I'll get Don to tell you all about it at the end of the presentation. So please do stay tuned for that. Okay, so the next topic is peace. Learn to be at peace with yourself and others. Conflict does not have to lead to contentiousness. Conflict is an opportunity for clarification resolution and growth. Know your truth, speak your truth, but do not expect others to see things your way. We all have a unique perspective and deserve respect for what we know. Finding a mutually agreeable solution lifts the relationship to a new level and is very rewarding and satisfying. That's actually how we build relationships is through conflict. You know, and everybody has it. And it isn't the issue. It's what we do with it that um, matures us. If resolution does not seem possible, let the issue go. Give it up to the universe to resolve for you. Would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? I found that being happy was more important than being right. And I, I find that works really well with people who are stubborn or strong-willed. Let them be right. Let them have their say. No problem. I don't care. I know what I know. I know my truth. I'd rather be happy. Since discovering and using the Nubby Ball concept from step nine, to see the many possible perspectives in any given situation, I can let things go. I not only can accept others unconditionally, I can also accept myself unconditionally as I see the many different perspectives I have held over my lifetime. Each position gave me a specific vantage point for learning. Let others have their perspective for learning too. Hi guys, break time for a short message. YouTube will not monetize me, so if you enjoy my content and want to support my efforts, help me to cover my expenses by visiting my shop to buy yourself a beautiful Orgone Generator. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand, and they are ethically sourced, handmade, and double-charged for maximum effect. They are only available through my website, www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. Dot com. Many people are finding comfort with Zendome's organ generators, commonly called Organite. 
They are a simple compound which balance ambient energy by converting negative energy and EMF into positive healing energy with many easily confirmed health benefits. They are a simple compound with alchemic and energetic properties. These devices function as self-driven, continuously operating, highly efficient, negative to positive energy transmutation factories. They help diminish the harmful effects of electromagnetic frequency radiation by attracting and converting negative energies, retuning them into new and more healthful sound and light wave patterns, and they help to purify the atmosphere and accelerate plant growth. They also help stimulate positive mood and are a natural remedy for poor sleep patterns. When organite is within range of any corded or wireless electronic device, it will efficiently and continuously transform that energy into orgone as it is being transmitted. This essentially creates orgone energy transmitters out of any and all emitters of harmful negative energy. You can use these devices for focusing the mind, healing, meditation, and for spiritual growth. Zendome's Organite are my unique brand of orgone generators, and they are only available through my website. Don't be fooled by imitations. Check out my website to see my latest selection at www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N healthcoach.com. Check them out today. Now, let's get back to the show. To become truly peaceful, we must become good forgivers. Forgiveness starts within. Once you have compassion for self, compassion for others is much easier to achieve. Altering our environment is another way to bring peace into our lives, and I refer you back to step eight. Spend time in nature, take a sauna, listen to music, and become more aware of how your choices of entertainment make you feel. A little suspense might be exciting, but when excessive, it gets you pumping out the cortisol. So does anger, negative thoughts and resentments, fear and worry. Now, when we're watching entertainment, our uh, many aspects of our brain and our body do not realize this is entertainment. And that can really shrink your toroidal field too. So although there's nothing wrong with it, just we want to be aware and conscious of how much time we're spending in that state. And the other thing I want to say about the pumping out of the cortisol, that's what causes a lot of anxiety, adrenal exhaustion, which leads to depression. And this also causes us to produce more insulin. And insulin is what causes us to accumulate excess body fat. So it really has a whole effect. And another thing I just want to throw in, even though it's not related, is I used to gain weight when I was watching the cooking channel because my body couldn't tell the difference between what food was actually on my plate and what I was watching on the cooking channel. So I just thought that was interesting. So meditation is the quick fix. It doesn't take long. It can be done almost anywhere and it restores inner harmony. Other quick fixes include stretching, going for a walk, dancing, gardening, and hugging a person or a pet or even a tree, any living thing. Spin, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, I just uh I just kind of pieced things together um uh because I was I was I, I don't know if I've mentioned I was I was heavy as well like I was uh I was over 260 pounds and it just got me thinking like one of my one of my indulgences I didn't have cable but anytime I had the opportunity I, I watched Hell's Kitchen yeah. and just has me has me wondering you know like the correlation with like with the food not understanding you know like the your brain not really seeing the difference and just has me asking questions <laughs> but yeah i will also um i also will say that uh i take a, a walk on my on my lunch break at work every day and 
usually if I'm feeling off when I come back, I, I feel better. So I just try to take anything that's irritating me or whatever. I take it out to the park. And if I'm feeling really off, I will hug a tree. I don't care who's watching. And for me personally, it, it does make a difference. It's worth yeah. it. <laughs> Absolutely. Me too. I, I, I hug trees because it wicks away stress. So when I'm going through a really hard time, a tree hugging, I find it very, very beneficial. Kindness. Whenever possible, be on good terms with everyone. This includes people in the service industry and even telemarketers. Well, at least if they're real people. After all, they're just trying to make a living. I know nowadays, a lot of the telemarketing is just bots and, you know, um, I don't know what to say about that. But when we're dealing with real people, they have real feelings and they're just trying to make a living. You know, when there's no need to add nastiness, we can be kind to them. We can still say no firmly, but we can be kind about it. Kindness makes everyone feel of value and is a good way to pay forward blessings. Good things happen for you as kindness is drawn back into your life experiences. So a lot of people don't realize kindness is a way of paying forward. So if you do things for people and you don't expect anything back, you often find you get rewards from places you never experienced it. Somebody gives you something or does you a favor that's completely unrelated. But energetically, I think it is very much related. So kindness pays forward blessings, not that you're doing it for your reward that's coming, but just because it feels good, you know, it's a part of love. You never know how kindness can affect others. Even small acts can have life-changing effects for others. It may even save lives. Treat those who are closest to you, your parents, your siblings, your children, your pets, and even your food with kindness. Practice kindness as a way of life and be prepared to, to become amazed by the results. Even if you don't see immediate results, rest assured that you are sending out a positive ripple which affects all things. Now, some people might think it odd that I say be kind to your food. Well, actually, I recommend you even talk to your food. Thank it for giving its life to you, whether it's a vegetable, whether it's meat, uh, appreciate it. Be kind to your food, and it has a very different energetic effect once it enters your digestive system. Goodness. Goodness is excellence of moral quality. It stimulates honesty, fairness, personal responsibility, and personal excellence. Practicing goodness leads to peace and contentment. It increases your value as a physical and spiritual being. Be good to others. Be good to yourself. So we can see here that goodness actually has a very positive effect on our physiology, our mental well-being, our emotions. It's a very good thing to, to practice. And all of these virtues require practice. None of them come easy to, to us, maybe once in a while, but mostly, you know, it's a bit of work till it becomes habit. Be good to yourself. Rather than spoiling yourself in order to soothe your frustrated desires or your addictions or dull your senses or your damaged ego, become a loving, healthy parent to yourself. Plan ahead. Find out what foods, activities, and associations make you feel good and incorporate them into your life plan. So I already went into that a bit about developing an internal parent and the rewards are amazing. Mildness. Stay calm. Mildness is closely aligned with patience and usually takes practice. Losing your temper doesn't just happen. There are stages of discontent which lead up to it. Recognizing the feelings associated with these stages allows you to make better choices. When I feel the tension build, I often take time out and remove myself from the situation. After I self-soothe myself back to rationality, I discover new and often novel ways to handle the situation before I go back to it. 
So a lot of people just, you know, you know, why did you do that? Why did you punch a hole in the wall? Oh, because I was so angry. I couldn't control myself. But you know what? If we're in touch with ourselves and we're, we're living mindfully and we're aware of what's going on in our bodies, there's lots and lots of signs. It starts with feeling a little uncomfortable and then it builds and you decide where your boundary is. And so what I do is I have to remove myself from the situation. And then people go, don't you walk away from me. You know, we're not finished this conversation. And I'll go, I'm just taking a break so I can stay calm, <laughs> you know. And then once I soothe myself back to rationality, I go, even want to participate in that. That's a bunch of bullshit. Or, hey, I could use a humor or I see something funny about it. And you go back and it's completely completely dissolves the tension and you can just move past it and hopefully work it out with the other person. Mildness not only fosters trust, it allows a state of being where we can think clearly and rationally. It also reveals the true intentions of others so that we can have free choice as to whether we want to participate in any particular dialogue or situation. Mildness allows for compassion towards others who unintentionally push our buttons. Many people suffer from the negative effects of contemporary life and behave in ways that are as distressing to themselves as it is to others. Mildness makes room for mercy. So in this case, what I'm referring to is how does it reveal the intentions of others? Well, if you calm yourself back down and you stay mild, and you return to the city, you choose to return to the situation, and the other person won't let it go, then you know, that's on them. That's not on you. Right? That's for them to figure out. That's not your job to persuade them or calm them down. No, that's on them. And that's their responsibility for the saying you do you and I'll do me. So you do me. I mean, I didn't mean that the way it came out. I do me. And then I go back to the situation. And if they're not going to do them, then there's nothing I can do about that. Right. Yeah. And uh, most people push our buttons unintentionally. There are some who are manipulators and we usually staying calm helps us to identify who is a manipulator or who's a bit sociopathic or who's a bit of a narcissist. And we might just choose not to include them in our lives or at very least what they call gray rock them so that you're not adding to the whole um, engagement. So mildness makes room for mercy because everybody loses their temper sometimes. And until we start really practicing mildness, we will lose ours from time to time too. And so as others forgive us or offer us mercy, we want to experience that for ourselves and towards other people. Before I move on to patients, do you folks have anything you want to add or... Um, I'm good. Okay. Patience. Like mildness, patience requires practice. Patience allows room to really listen to people and to assess all the nonverbal cues, which are an important part of their message. Instead of thinking about what we are going to say next, we can calmly consider what the other person is communicating. And I got to tell you, I I really have to work on patience. I am not naturally a patient person. That is a tough one, you know, or I'm in a conversation. I'm so busy thinking about what I want to say next. I'm not really hearing what the other person is saying. So I've been practicing that one a lot and every day in my life. And I'm starting to get a bit of a handle on it. I'm feeling good about my progress, but I'm certainly not perfect at it. And so I think uh, patience, and, and, and that includes patience for myself. When I go and screw something up, I get so mad at myself. And, you know, I got to be patient. Nobody's friggin' perfect. We all make mistakes and we have to allow ourselves to be, you know, to be good and to be patient with ourselves. Patient is an important skill to develop when dealing with children and Adults who suffer from arrested development. Not everyone has been blessed with mature parents. And in the absence of good role models, these ones don't always develop to maturity until they learn to parent themselves 
later on. Patience is the hallmark of an emotionally mature individual. Patient allows life time to fall into place. And I got to confess that I definitely had arrested development. In some ways, I still do. And it's only in my older years, my mature years, that I'm actually able to start to become a mature person and to find alternate ways of doing things because I did not have role models. My parents were very narcissistic. They did not know how to look after themselves or other people. We were not taught basic life skills. So I had to sort of learn through my mistakes and, um, you know, and obviously I have a grasp now or I wouldn't be able to put this program together. There's a lot of people who have arrested development and we really need to be patient with them because they're not trying to be that way. They do not have the skills. And these skills are not taught in public school. They're not taught in the churches. They're not taught when you go to mental health. Where are you supposed to learn them? You got it. You know what I mean? How many bloody noses do we need to get before we wake up? Well, that all depends. So hopefully this program will also help with that. Don, did you have something you want to add? Yeah, something this program has actually helped that Spin and I are working together, well, through together, is being more responsive and less reactionary. Like, yeah, we're finding ourselves going, wait, 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 no. Because we're, we're catching our programmed responses and instead of embracing them and just being pissed off, we're stopping and going, no, it's actually this, slow down. And it, it's a skill we're developing as a family and it and mm -hmm. part and part to this course, this program, because like it, it's paradigm shifting when you can look at different perspectives before you react. And yep. it so um it's it's opened up the conversation because it's exactly like what you were saying about arrested development. I had reality slap me upside the head when my father died in 2021. I had the ultimate oh shit moment when I I that's when reality sunk in and it's like oh my goodness like i i i have been used as a tool of destruction i've you know i i have all this toxic behavior and i had no idea because it was normal yep and so i've had to relearn everything and like i've i've apologized to ray profusely it's like dude i like I, I, I see the stuff that I I need to do differently, but I'm also not beating myself up because, you know, like my mom, I, I'm not making excuses for her. She was surrounded by narcissists. She was surrounded by controlling people. So she never had the chance to grow. My yeah. father was reeled in by the same controlling individuals. So we never had the chance. And so by doing this program, it's it's helped me take a step back and, and analyze my own behavior. So then now it's like, okay, like I snapped at Dawn. It's like, oh, maybe there's a different way to approach this. And so now I ask him for feedback, you know, like how could I have handled this differently to avoid confrontation? You know, like if that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, it, to it totally does. Um, I was watching a show the other day. They were talking about, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, Hopinopino, -ho -ho something like that is Hawaiian. And basically, it just means at any opportunity saying, I'm sorry, um, you know, I did not mean to hurt you. Um, and then you say something you appreciate about the person. I love the fact that you're patient with me or that, you know, you don't retaliate. And then say, I love you. And it just fixes it. And we can do that internally as well, you know. And the whole world is sort of a an outward reflection of what we are going through inside personally. So we can go out and protest and we can demand change and we can do all kinds of things. But until we fix inside ourselves, we're really 
not doing any good. It's just a big, and I think that's part of the control system and that's how they leverage power over us. So this is another thing that the nine steps does is it opens your mind. It gives you different avenues. And I'm not saying this is the only way. I'm saying this is a way. So, you know, consider the material, take what serves you, mix it in with what you've learned elsewhere and pass it on. Because the more we share this, the more we can give other people the opportunity to quite literally grow up and, and mature as a species. And that leads to self-control. Self-control is different from patience in that it gives you the choice to self-govern your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. This is especially important for health transformation as we try new ways of eating, caring for ourselves and addressing our addictions. Self-control is knowing that you can, but deciding that you won't. Self-control before you act, stop, think, and breathe. And this is another really tough one. And it was very tough for me because I had to overcome many addictions. And I know you folks are no strangers to that either. Not trying to, you know, not saying anything you haven't said publicly already. But I'm just saying that, you know, self-control is tough and it's taken me years to get self-control, especially over my thoughts and my eating patterns. So we all get these negative thoughts or cruel or unkind thoughts. And then I have a choice to say, is that me or is that not me? I don't know where it comes from, but that's not me and I'm not going to own it. I'm not going to think about it because that's not me, you know, and I switch over to the alternative. But self-control that's a big one. And it's really lacking in society. People are very pleasure oriented. Self control is necessary for engaging in all of these practices, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, mildness, patience and faith. It all starts as the tiny seed of self control within you in your heart of hearts which strengthens as you exercise it. Self-control is closely aligned with self-soothing, and it's an important way to show mercy to the self. All of these practices must be directed towards self before they can be shone outward to others. Change yourself and the world automatically changes too. We are all connected. So that brings us to faith. Faith is the assured expectation of things not yet revealed. Faith gives you a special lens, which lets you see the good in others and the positive aspects within challenges. Faith allows for forgiveness, optimism, and perseverance. Faith gives you the power and might to sail through turbulent times, which always precede the upcoming manifestation of your desires. Have faith. When you step outside of your comfort zone for your higher purpose, the universe supports you in every way. And again, we covered this, I believe, in the last lesson, but I think it bears repeating. Remember that turbulence accompanies manifestation. So remember, that's another reason to keep the faith. The unpleasant experiences and challenges we face en route to our goals are called turbulence. And that's part of chaos theory, which is part of quantum mechanics. This is the chaotic state experienced just before manifestation. Wavicles are pulled from subatomic space, which is also known as zero point or Planck level, and have a temporary destabilizing effect as they pull energy from our reality to create drag. As the wavicles cease to exist in an amorphous state, they become three-dimensional, creating the outcome that we have chosen. And for those that aren't familiar with the term wavicles, it's the state of matter that is neither matter nor energy. It's a combination of both. It's an amorphous state. And then when we manifest, we're bringing that from an energetic or a thought pattern or a desire into the physical three-dimensional. 
In practical terms, turbulence means things get messy, even painful before they become manifest. So when the challenges come, renew your faith because your reward is closer than you think. Now is not the time to give up. Summon your courage to put aside your mental control and grasp a quantum reality with all of its benefits. Be patient with yourself. Exercise faith and you will be amazed by the outcome. Until you spread your wings, you will, you will have no idea how far you can fly. So before I conclude, was there anything you folks wanted to add to that? Any questions you might have? Uh, we just, we really appreciate the, um, the pony analogy that, that you gave us, um, when, when we were first talking about, about this, uh, yeah, and, that's in that, step, that was in step two, the step yes, two workshop. Yeah. yeah. So absolutely have, have a look at that if you, if you haven't, because it's, it, this will make sense. So I, I'm not going to go into detail, but like this, this last, this last week has just been a crap show and that's the part we're at the point now where we're laughing because it's just like where's our pony and the other day we were driving along and we looked out the window and we saw this pony and it was rolling around in the field just so blissful and and it's just like that that looks like our pony like <laughs> that just <laughs> Yeah, it just it it gave us it gave us a moment where we just we were just able to just laugh at everything that's just been thrown our way. We're, we've thrown our hands up in the air, and it's like you know what the universe has our back because it always has. It's going to work out. We don't know how. We're not going to ask how. It's just going to line up. That's the way it is. <laughs> yep, absolutely. So yeah. in conclude, sorry, go ahead, Don. And like as as far as the pony leavings, like it, it it's just there has to be something coming because I'll just give you the one like our landlord went on vacation, our hot water tank broke. It took a while to get it fixed. They went on vacation again, our hot water tank broke. So they came back after from vacation again. They fixed the hot water tank. That seemed to go wonderfully. The next day, I went to shave because I had something to do and I had to actually go out into the real world, and the sink broke. And I'm like. Okay, yeah, I, I see the poop. Where's the pony? Where, where, where's my pony? Like, yeah, and keeping a sense of humor. I mean, because getting angry or upset doesn't help. You know, it doesn't fix it. You know, no. so you need to. Yeah, I, I, I think it's important. So, in conclusion, practicing these virtues will create your state of bliss so you can experience feelings of perfect happiness and spiritual joy. By practicing the nine steps to quantum health transformation, we bring comfort to the body, steps eight, six, and five, happiness to the mind, steps nine, seven, four, and three, and joy to our spirit steps two and one, thus creating the conditions necessary to feel a state of bliss. This combination creates a magical condition which makes all things possible and allows you to create a reality environment which is peaceful and rewarding. These exercises will improve every experience you have and in some surprising ways. So there's a picture here for those of you on audio. It's a tree. It says this fruit is always in season and the fruit is labeled gentleness, love, patience, kindness, self-control, faithfulness, peace, generosity, and joy. And for those of you who have the PDF uh, primer, you can link directly to step one from this page. This concludes the Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0 advanced training for healers and alternative Health Practitioners, Step 1, White, Achieve a State of Bliss and Spiritual Exercises. Please feel free to contact me for more information and for assistance with your awakening process. I am grateful for all the forces that assist me with the production of this free 9-step online course.
So next week, we're going to do the conclusion. So I've got here, please join me for the conclusion to the Nine Steps to Quantum Health Transformation version 3.0. And if you need help or you have any questions, you can contact me. My name is Karen Holton. I'm a holistic wellness coach and a talk show host. My website, again, is www.karenholtonhealthcoach.com. That's K-A-R-E-N-H-O-L-T-O-N, healthcoach.com. You can find me on YouTube and other social media platforms. And you can send me an email at quantumhealthnow at gmail.com. And here is my free resources page where you can link to the many different things that I offer. I even have published articles. There's direct links to find me on Rumble, Odyssey, YouTube. And I've got tons of podcasts and shows. Um, the Quantum Guide Show airs every Wednesday uh, evening. And I interview people from all over the world who have something amazing and positive to add or insights to reveal. And the Aliens and Angels podcast is coming back as a live Q&A community chat forum um, week after next. And we recommend that you come and join us and check us out through the live chat, participate in the conversation, add what you know to what I know, and it should be very, very interesting. And that's it for step one. I'm going to stop the share now and go back. So, uh, yeah, so now we've done uh, the nine steps, which is actually works out to 12 lessons. And next week is 13, which is the conclusion. And we're going to go live. You know what? Your kitty looks so much like my kitty. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Mine might be fatter. Very much. <laughs> Beautiful. Your boy. Yeah, I've got two furry children. They keep me very busy. Lately, they've been waking me up at like five o'clock in the morning going, feed me, feed me, feed me. And I'm going, no, I'm not ready. We well, are. He sneaks we are. out at three. In the Pardon? He sneaks out at three in the morning. He does. He tries. He? <laughs> ah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared to let mine out. I do once in a while, but I'm scared you'll run away. I don't want to lose them, you know. It's because both my both my cats are rescues, so they have used to being free, and uh, but they also were starving, and they also were frozen, and they also weren't doing very good. So I'm their mum now. I got to put my foot down once in a while. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> So with that, do you folks have anything you want to add? Any perspectives or um, questions? Or now that you've done, I know it's a lot of information. Going through it the first time, it seems like a lot. When you go through it the second time, and third, I've gone through it many times, actually. And now I'm able to see the whole thing as one unit, you know. Uh, before, I couldn't. Just looking at one step was already mind-blowing enough, you know, for me. But um, I've put this all to good practical use and I've really improved my life so much. I can't stress it enough, you know, and it doesn't matter what your educational background is, what country you're from, what ethnic group you identify with, your gender, it doesn't matter anything. It, it's, it's applicable to everybody. So it was a big job to boil it all down to such simple terms, but and again, it isn't the end all and be all. It's a jumping off point where people can then go and do further research in the areas that um, interest them. But it's definitely, I think, worth uh, worth trying and worth sharing. That's that's what I was going to say. Um, like there was there was uh, because I've I've been trying to um, shift. Like I, I think everything really started to kick off for me in 2011 and it has been a long journey mm -hmm. and i will say it would have been a lot easier with with the with a course like this um and the the way that that you present the information it, like it's it's just like here it is and i i really appreciate how you you know you encourage like 
take what resonates with you the rest don't don't worry about it and and you you the way the way that you present it too um you you give somebody just just starting out and experienced people as well um things to think about and you know like different perspectives to to enhance our journey and and different things to to look into and and I like you know like we're we're wrapping things up but I fully intend I am going back to step nine this is going to be this week's listening because for like in my journey right now um I've done the part where you know like I found out okay so we we know that we've been duped and we know that there's other beings out there and and all of this and it's it's great and thank you for the information I'm at the point now what do I do about it how do I undo, you know, like the programming and, and all of this stuff? And this is, you're answering it and I'm very grateful for it. And I'm going to be going back and expanding even more. Wonderful. Um, for me, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for inviting us to be part of this program. Um, because with the next sentence, you'll understand why I thank you is because for me, especially it's been paradigm shifting. Like, it it really has allowed me to at least go one nub over in my day-to-day behavior. I feel like a lot of my own personality has shifted over the last few weeks since we've been doing this course. And as you know, I, I have my gray matter wrapped up in some big projects right now and things that I'm going to be presenting. And once I'm done that, I am going to come back to step nine and do it again because I want to do it because of this course it's unlocked so many things i've had to kind of rabbit hole a few other things and then come back to it again to see what it does again because it's absolutely phenomenal and it it really does change your perspective it's it's also helped um as a as a parent of a teenager too um i would i would highly recommend it to uh, to parents to watch as well and if your kids are are willing to participate with you, it is it is so valuable because you know, like I've been I've been trying to tell Ray different things, and and you know, as with all kids, it's like, well, it's coming from mom, so okay, whatever. Cause, but hearing, you know, like he's heard it, he's heard it from us, and now he's hearing it from you. Well, maybe there might be some validity to what mom's saying. (laughs) And I think it sows seeds. So even as Ray, you know, uh, gets older and goes about his his life becoming more and more independent all the time, there will be times where he'll be reminded of different things he's learned or that you've told him. And then he can, you know, those seeds can hopefully grow and because we want we want our the best for our kids. We don't want them to necessarily go through all the shit and abuse that we went through, you know. Be nice if they could learn how to avoid some of that, which we didn't know. So we had to learn the hard way. And of course, they will always make mistakes. And then it's our job to help them pick up the pieces, you know, when it happens, not trying to preach doom and gloom, but I'm just saying life has its ups and life has its downs, and that's how it goes. So yeah. Yeah, so I really appreciate uh, the fact that you folks have been here for every single workshop. Thank you so much. It's been a huge commitment. I really appreciate it. And of course, you've been sharing it out. Don's been sharing it out on his channel. So I guess that's about it for today. Again, I hope everybody comes and joins us for the live next Sunday at noon Mountain Time. And uh, we'll do the conclusion. And uh, I think it'll be very interesting we can talk about all kinds of things that sort of tie in loosely or directly but before we go um dawn and spin do you want to tell people what you're up to and uh what you've got to offer and about where people can find you and all that other kind of good stuff um yeah for me all of my stuff is on march 4th productions mostly on youtube because i'm still having a hell of a time with my phone and rumble not getting along it's something to do with reloading the page it just shuts it off every time um and actually as we were saying earlier i just before this one started finishing finished recording an episode with uh robert kellel 
and Stephen from BG Cast. And I, I should have known it wasn't going to stay on subject, but we tried to talk about Project Oblivion and some of the dark programs used in the spiritual and paranormal community. And it was just an absolutely fascinating episode. Um, and there's going to be a part two eventually because you know, we scratched the surface of a lot of cool things. Um, again, there's also the project that you and I have coming up uh, about the Matrix reality. And that's been another source of where my brain's been going. So Spin is actually going to probably next week take over the Roundtable show for a week or two so I can focus on what I'm doing with these projects because I'm deeply involved in them, um, which kind of leads me over to you. So, yeah, apparently I'm going to be taking over the Roundtable show <laughs> because I'm the one with the time uh, during the day while I'm at work. I've been I've li listened to podcasts. That's actually how I found Karen and how we ended up here. Um, I've uh I've, I've been really busy with work. I think, you know, we alluded, alluded to some uh, extra uh, unexpected expenses. So that's kind of where my focus has been. Um, I need to, I have, I do have uh, an interview with uh, Stone Hobbit coming out next week, uh, probably tomorrow, if I can stay on top of my game. Um, and uh, we're talking about, um, uh homestead like just different homesteading things and um shifting um, she's she's a vegan so she talks about how she supplements her her diet and how she finds protein and stuff like that it's really really quite interesting um i've had my spinning wheel out this weekend i'm actually working on on a project it's uh it's it's a, a halter top um, I started, I started off with a pattern. I wasn't happy with it. So I'm kind of winging it right now. So that's going to be up, um, on, uh, Facebook and Instagram. I'll post that when I get finished. Um, I do want to get another spinning video or something craft related. I need to, uh, figure out balancing my time. So anyway, you can, uh, find me on, uh, Instagram and, uh, uh, at Canadian Spinja, and I'm on Facebook. You can follow me on there at Canadian.spinja. Wonderful. Now I'm wondering, do you folks have a donation uh, link? Um, I do have a PayPal account, but that's about yeah. it. Um, yeah, I have. Yeah, a, that's I've how done... I do it. I have a PayPal yeah. account, and I have a donation link uh, that's to my PayPal as well. I just highly recommend. Um, giving that to folks because you never know when someone might want to help out, you know, appreciate what you're doing and uh, and want to help out. And I don't think there's any shame in asking. Anyway, I just thought I would bring that up. If you give that to me, I could include that also in the description below. So all the links uh, will be below in the description. And uh, again, I want to thank you guys for joining me. And I want to thank Everybody out there, the listeners and the viewers, thank you so much for your participation. Please do share this with your family and your friends. It's important to get this information out there. Aw, there's Buck. So cute. And um, <laughs> I guess that's it for today. And so we'll see you next time for the conclusion of Quantum Health Transformation. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Lion. Only makes you hurt Denial Only makes it worse Love and surrender Seem the fastest way To bring an end to Bitter painful days Somewhere down The stars are falling Jewels upon a thin black veil And you will thrill to hear your calling Five seconds seems like Five billion years Ten thousand galaxies away Yet still so near